What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. It's time for another M motor flight. My first one since I got my level 3. Got my level 3 and celebrated with an L, an I, and then a K. So my first M motor since my level 3. Um, pretty similar altitude probably, right? Yeah, should be. Probably what we simmed it, it was like 13, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So yeah, a little bit a little bit shy. I did 14.3 on my level three. Uh, but we're flying the color shifting five inch Punisher this weekend, weather permitting. We do have a lot of issues with that in Idaho. But uh, so today we're gonna walk you through the steps of building yourself an Aerotech high power M motor. And um, this is the first time, I messaged Gary from Aerotech and he said that he doesn't believe that the M2050 grains need to be glued into the liner. And we're talking gluing the actual grains into the inside of the liner, not gluing the grains end to end together like you do on some motors. Um, however, it is required on the M1500, the M1780, pretty much every other M motor for this case that isn't the M1297 and the L2200, I believe, requires it as well. Um, it's not going to hurt anything to have them glued in. And I have to do it on my... Uh, end motor anyway, so this is gonna be a good practice run. If I mess this motor up, it's gonna suck because it's a two hundred fifty dollar motor. But it would really suck to do it with the thousand dollar one. So we're gonna learn with the old M twenty fifty. This is a pretty ferocious motor. Um, if I was smart, I would have like looked up you know the uh, impulse and stuff like that, but I didn't. If I was smart, I would have had a knife over here as well. You probably hear my dad sanding in the background. He uh, got, oh, can you see that in the shot? Probably. Yep. Bald Moms Rock uh, Extreme Dark Star, four inch, 75. That's an old school kit. Uh, we've had that thing for what, 10, 11 years? Probably a little longer, huh? Yeah, when was your? Well, level two was 2011, right? Yeah, actually, is today still the sixth? Or is it the seventh? So yesterday was uh, 10 years ago Frank Cosden died. So yeah, that was just a couple months after he died. Oh yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe today is the day that he died though. I can't remember. But um, yeah, so that we've had that for probably at least 11 years then. And it hasn't flown in eight. So. For some reason, when we built that thing in our naivety, um, and he, you know, he, my dad flew a three grain 75 L for his level two and a four inch rocket. It's a pretty bold play, but uh, I kind of talked him into that. But um, we built it so that the recovery gear just always gets attached to the forward closure because, you know, most high power motors, you got a spot for an eye bolt. Uh, we didn't put any sort of anchor in there at all. <laughs> so Hindsight. I don't know why we did that, but um, luckily I have two four inch fiberglass kits. You want to show them? So my dad robbed the coupler from my four inch Dare Red Max uh, that has been sitting for two years now and hasn't been built. So not like it's uh, inconveniencing me, but he's going to fabricate a little uh, anchor that he can slip down there and glue in because he was just gonna go back to flying the Stinger. You didn't take the retainer off, right? Yeah, you're no. still good. Cause uh, he was supposed to do his level three, the tap's gonna be out of town, yada, yada. So uh, yeah, that's gonna fly. Are you in the 1275? K1275? Yeah. That's a big, big K motor. That's about as much K motor as you can get. That's almost an L. That's a good motor. Worst case scenario, it was going to uh, chuck one of these casting tubes and clog up my nozzle and cost us a case and my 5 inch rocket before it ever gets a 98 millimeter motor in it. <laughs> Not saying that that was going to happen, but. Uh, having the casting tube glued to the inside of the liner is definitely a good way to prevent that and we're not affecting anything by doing it so that's what we're going to do. Uh, I've never done this before. Taylor Jesse, my uh, rocket mentor basically at this point, Gorilla Glue, um, Aerotech recommends Elmer's Glue All Max which is also polyurethane. Yeah look at those cores. Oh, there's some big boys. Man. Yeah, that's that's a big core, <coughs> and it is just three real long grains. That's Thank sick. You. Now I just want to fly M twenty fifties. Makes the assembly easier. You have one less grain. <laughs> Those ones are. I think 
think they probably should be. So this is Aerotex Propellant X, which is pretty nasty. Um, something comparative to, uh, I guess, like CTI C-Star. They had M2250, was kind of the go-to, relatively cheap, but a lot of power motor for a long time. They don't make that anymore. So the M2050 is kind of stepping in. Um, this casting tube's peeling up a little bit, but one thing Taylor told me to make sure I do, test fit every grain before you start gluing stuff. I don't remember who it was. Do you remember Airfest? Somebody was putting together an N5800 and accidentally got the grain glued like halfway into the liner. Oh, yeah. That's an expensive mistake. Yeah, That's like a $1,200 motor. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember who that was. Even if I did know who it was, I probably would uh, spare them that and not, <laughs> not tell everyone that that happened. But all these grains are fitting in real nice and easy. So that's cool. Review the Aerotech steps for gluing in grains one more time just to make sure I know what I'm doing. I'm not here to pretend I know what I'm doing and teach you guys. You guys are learning with me. I wipe the dust from the inside of the liner, rather, not the grease. If there was grease in there, we'd be having issues with gluing stuff. The Voodoo Rocketry video that I watched all the time when I was younger because it had that giant mosquito right at the beginning. Oh, yeah? That was LDRS. And there was a. In that video, there's a kid offering motor case cleaning services, you know, for like a dollar for 29, two dollars for 38 or whatever. Oh, yeah. And I used to want to be that kid so I could make money to buy rocket motors. And now I want that kid to come to launches so I don't have to clean my motor cases. <laughs> Just glue her up. <laughs> I guess you take your glove off. Oh god. Ah! <laughs> Paper towel me. <laughs> there there we go. Go. <laughs> thanks, thanks. <laughs> Guys, if you're uh, if you got pro tips, any people that've been flying M's for a long time, gluing grains into liners, let me know what I'm doing wrong here. <laughs> so we got the next grain pre-glued. <clears throat> We're gonna put our O-ring in that goes between the grains. Good. And I didn't put glue on the bottom portion of this grain. There we go. That's using our noodle. All right. Dad got this situated, so now Paul Mars Rock has a shock cord anchor. My grains are all glued in place, so I'm going to finish putting this motor together. All right, so here's the sled my brother 3D printed for me. It's in color shifting filament, which is appropriate. Uh, just batteries on the back side. I'm just gonna use these standoffs. I uh, just had a couple altimeters sitting around that I haven't used forever, so I decided to actually build a new sled instead of just recycling the ones from the other Punishers. 
So we got our RC3 Sport and our RC2 Plus. And then, what's on the other? Oh yeah, it's an RC2 Plus and is that a Stratologer CF? inside my punisher uh, so if anybody has a straddle that they haven't flown that they want to sell let me know all right let me give you guys a little update here the rc2 is our backup altimeter and i like the rc2 a lot for one it's forty dollars but it's got this little cheat graph here so you can see i've got it on the high beep so that it sounds different than the rc3 the drogue is plus one because that's going to be our backup drogue charge and we've got it at 800 without the extra 200 feet so that's going to throw the main at eight this is going to be set i think at 15 i haven't decided yet 12 or 15 and um yeah just my usual nonsense just twisting power the altimeters up the reason I like the uh, strata logger so much is um, the RC2 doesn't have a terminal block for the battery switch like the RC3 does. The strata logger does, but it's small like the RC2. But they are hard to get a hold of. So again, I have one. It's in my little my three-inch Punisher, but I would like another one. So if you got one, send me a message. All right, I got my. Uh, Charges all made, so what we're going to do right now is adjust the RRC2's altitude to 1,200 feet. Okay. We're good. Alright. Exit through the gift shop. Ready to fly. Aerotech M2050 Propellant X. It's going to move. What did it weigh? 26 pounds? Yeah. Might be a tiny bit heavier now because there's electronics in there and batteries and stuff, but probably still under 27. And that motor, what did we say? 600 something initial thrust. Yeah. A peak thrust 602, and that's right at the beginning. So the lift off thrust to weight ratio is like 20 to 1. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. It's, yeah, it should be safe, I'd say. Yeah, that's going to roll out quick. So, hopefully uh, tomorrow we got a video. Yeah. Well, not tomorrow uh, relative to when I upload this one, but hopefully the next video you see is some good news about the first flight of the 5-inch uh, Punisher here. And uh, hopefully also a good flight on K1275 in this. Oh yeah, I was going to show them your, uh, your fix. I don't know how well you can see that, but... There's a coupler in there now with the shock cord running down the side of it and a big knot tied in the, underneath it. A lot of glued surface area in there. That's not going anywhere. Uh, just a quick little video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll probably make another one tomorrow since you guys have been watching my videos and it's exciting me seeing the view counts go up. Thank you to all the new subscribers. I've gotten about a thousand in the last month, which is pretty insane. Um, so yeah, we're just going to keep doing rocket stuff for you. Thank you guys for watching. Um, we have channel membership available now. I haven't really mentioned it, but it's like $1.99 a month. You can be a member of the channel. If I can keep posting videos this consistently, I'll start uploading them. Um, I want to do a giveaway. I wanted to do a giveaway of a rocket when I hit 5,000 subscribers, and it just kind of came and went out of nowhere. So I'm trying to figure out logistics on that. Thanks for watching. Rocketvlogs.com, APCP t-shirts, all that stuff. We'll, uh, we'll fly an motor this weekend. Peace out. Channel. One.